everything has changed. So we all need to too. When I started cruising, there was one main dining room with a first and second seating and a buffet. All I had to do was decide which seating time and table size I wanted, and that was it. But now dining is so much more complicated and there are things I see cruisers keep getting wrong. Until now, if you follow these tips, you definitely won't. Welcome aboard, I'm Gary Bembridge and let's go cruise ship dining. Before a cruise, I first of all make sure I know the current evening dining setup and options. Really important because it keeps changing. There are two key venues that I check. First of all, what the main dining room situation is on the particular ship right now. And it's not actually as simple as it sounds. For example, I cruised on Celebrity Silhouette and there was one large main dining room. Now, a couple of months later, I returned to Celebrity. This time I was going on edge. But instead of one main dining room, there were four small theme ones that I had to choose from and rotate around. The Cosmopolitan, Tuscan, Normandy and Cyprus. I had to choose which, what time, what table size and who I dined with every single night. Now on my next cruise, which was on Disney Magic, they also had no main dining room, but three dining rooms, Rapunzel's Royal Table, Animator's uh, Palette and Luminaire's. But instead of being able to choose which and when, I was given a strict schedule and I had to rotate through them on set days, always at the same table number, with the same table companions and waiting staff. The cruise after that was on Cunard Queen Elizabeth, a line I thought I knew the dining set up well, to find instead of the two set dining times that I'd known literally for decades, there were now three, early, late and anytime dining. Another complication with main dining rooms on some ships is which one you eat in may also depend on what cabin type that you're actually in. So for example, on Celebrity, while most people dine in the main dining room or those main dining rooms, those in aqua grade cabins dine in a restaurant called Blue and those in suites in Lumini. Cunard, of course, is famous for having four different main dining rooms based on the grade of cabin, Britannia, Britannia Club, Princess and Queen's Grill. On the big resort ships like Norwegian, MSC Cruises, Royal Caribbean, they also have different main dining rooms for suite and regular guests. So once I've fathomed all that out, once I'm clear on where I'm dining, I personally prefer to go for the anytime dining option if they have that, where I can go when I want rather than those fixed dining times. But the key then is finding out if I can book those times before or I have to do during the cruise or if it's on a first come first serve basis each evening. That being my least favorite because it can often mean hanging around waiting at busy times. It is really important you find that out so you can plan your evenings in advance uh, because you may decide you want to use the buffet some evenings, for example. Now, talking of buffets, that is not as simple as it used to be. These days, I now find I also need to check if the buffet is an evening option or not. Now, I had always found and assumed that buffet restaurants would be open, in fact, most of the day on every single cruise line and always for dinner. But I've learned that may not be the case any longer. Now, while it still is on resort lines like Carnival, Norwegian or Caribbean MSC and the premium lines as they're called like Princess Holland America Celebrity, it is not always an option on other lines, particularly more premium lines. Now, for example, on that Disney Magic Cruise I was talking about, the buffet was not open in the evenings. On some small ship lines like Azamara, ultra luxury lines like Region 7C, Seabourne Silver Sea, the buffets turned into an a la carte served restaurant at night, so there's no buffet option. So once I've got all that sorted out, here is the next big mistake that I see. All too often, cruisers do not take the time to understand what food is currently included in the cruise fare. Now that's key because it's changing as the lines look to cut back costs and increase our actual onboard spend. So for example, on returning to Hot America, I found that they were starting to charge for some items like lobster in the main dining room. Other lines have, you know, an added surcharges for other included items. So watch out for that. So what dining and food is included does actually differ by cruise line. And again, it can also vary based on the grade of cabin. Let me give you a typical example of usual inclusions in food based on my recent Holland America Conningstown cruise. Included was the main dining room, breakfast, lunch and dinner, Lido Marketplace Buffet, open from about 6 a.m. to about 11.30 p.m., early rise of breakfast options in the coffee shop areas, dive-in burgers and pizza on the pool deck, soft serve ice cream, room service, afternoon tea, regular tea and coffee, and special events like a special chocolate night. 
But if you were in a suite, there was also included food all day in the suite's Neptune lounge, right the way from breakfast to evening snacks and canapes. The more premium line you go on, the more, of course, it's going to be included. So on lines like Oceania, Azamara, Region 70s, Viking, and so on, even the speciality restaurant food is included. You don't pay extra to go to those. So don't miss out by not asking and checking exactly what food and dining options are included in your fare. The third big mistake I see is around speciality dining, adding a lot of cost to the cruise by feeling almost the need that you have to go in case you're missing out on something. Now I ask three questions. Do I have the budget for it? Like, do I actually have onboard credit, for example? Is there a special event like a birthday happening while I'm on board, which makes it worth the extra? Or thirdly, is it a food or dishes I can't get in my included venue on the cruise. So for example, on Holland America, they have Tamarind, an incredible Asian fusion specialty restaurant that I like to go to. Now, assuming that all these questions, answer these questions convince me I should do specialty dining, there are still a couple of things I check out to avoid kind of other mistakes and overpaying. First of all, I check if there are offers or included specialty dining. They often are. So for example, I've recently booked an MSC Norwegian Fjords cruise, and in my cruise planner, there are heavily discounted packages online of two or three specialty dining nights. Many lines offer 50% of specialty dining on the first night, uh, and on embarkation day, they set up promotional stores around the ship with specialty dining deals. So I always check those out. Now, on that MSC cruise I've booked, as a status match, other cruise line status, I used my Cunard status to get diamond status on MSC, which also now means I get specialty dining for one night for free. So I always check the offers and if there are any inclusions in loyalty status or the fare if I'm thinking of doing specialty dining. Now next issue with that is booking. Now many specialty restaurants fill up fast on popular days, particularly sea days, and of course at popular times. So I book specialty dining as soon as the bookings open online because there are usually no cancellation fees if I want to change my mind, so no risk. Finally, I check on the rules. Now, some lines limit how often you can book to go. Like on Disney Magic, I could only go to the amazing Paolo, the Italian specialty restaurant, once. They also had a rule that it was adult only. Many lines also have smart dress codes for specialty dining, so I then know what I need to pack. Another mistake, or perhaps missed opportunity, is not taking advantage to try local or regional foods on offer while on a cruise. Now, I find that most lines have local or regional themed nights or dishes. These are often in the buffet with selected dishes in the main dining room. Now this, for example, was the case on my recent Holland America South America cruise where they had Chilean and Argentinian nights, but they also had Japanese and Indian nights too, so a chance to try unusual foods. So look out for and go to these. It gives a real opportunity to try and experiment with unusual and unique foods for no extra cost. By the way, talking of things to look out for, menus these days are often also gonna have a spa section with low calorie, low sugar and salt options, and of course more vegan and vegetarian dishes. So look out for those or ask for those. And also don't assume there is no flexibility in the menus. While on some cruise lines you can go way off menu, like in Cunard Queen's Grill or on ultra luxury lines like Regent, you can pretty much order anything you want but on most lines, there still is flexibility within the menu. So I've been able to ask, for example, for an extra main dish uh, or perhaps a selection of desserts, not just one. Dressings on the side, you know, extra steamed vegetables or a green salad, even though it's not on the menu. Dishes can often be adjusted, like, for example, on Hot America, recently that Trevor was talking about, they only offered creamed spinach, but I asked just for normal spinach and, you know, straightforward baked potatoes. It was all possible, even though it was not on the menu. Now, many lines can do this because the kitchens on cruise ships often serve all of the restaurants, so it's one central kitchen. The most extreme example of that, for example, I found on Disney, where even though I was rotating around the different restaurants each night with different menus, I could actually order any dish from any of the other menus if I wanted. If you do have any dietary issues, let the line know when you book, and as soon as you can, once you're on board, talk to the maitre d' in the main dining room. They will be the absolute key for ensuring that your needs are catered for. Now, how lines deal with dietary issues vary. Some will give you menus in advance, check, others just at the time of the meal. And I always encourage friends who have allergies to stick to the main dining room and avoid the buffet because it is much harder to be sure and check that dishes met your needs. And I often get messages from people who've 
had a bad experience by relying on the buffet. Talking of the buffet, I also recommend following some guidelines that the well-known cruise review site Cruise Critic has about what to do and what to avoid in the buffet. It's a list I follow and it's definitely worked for me. So they suggest, for example, avoiding foods and serving implements that others will have manhandled a lot. So focus on items served by the crew, like stations making fresh sandwiches, the carvery, a salad station, a pasta making station, and so on. Avoid foods that could go off or not be perfect if they've been sitting for a while, like sushi or pizza. You know, grab those as they're being made or pizza when it's just come out the pizza oven. If you're having self-serve ice cream, use a tub rather than a cone because people have been touching the handle. Avoid big communal sauce bottles. Ask the crew for sachets of ketchup or mayonnaise instead. Another change from the past, and so a mistake many make, is taking food from the dining venues and taking them out into port. Now, on my recent cruises in the Caribbean and South America and even in the Mediterranean, the local authorities no longer allow us to take food products off the ship and many of them had searches or used dogs to check. Regions are becoming increasingly concerned about introducing bugs or contaminants. So gone are the days of perhaps making a sandwich, taking some pastries or fruit out into the port. If I want to take something out, uh, I look for sealed items you know, like snack bars, which are sometimes uh, I find available in the buffet, for example. Possibly one of the most important things to do now is watch this video where I look at the main dining room do's and don'ts, where I start with a thing that most cruisers do not realize is critical in the main dining room. See you over there.